How's it going, guys? It is 12.51 a.m. Sunday, September 25th here in Japan, and we have a past level question for pharmacology for step one, okay? Even if you know the answer right away, I'll tell you some very fucking high-yield points regarding these other answer choices you might not be aware of. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group channel down below. Now start the clip. So 33-year-old woman, six-hour history of discoloration, mild pain of her fingers bilaterally. She reports no prior episodes of similar symptoms. Vitals are within normal limits. Laboratory tests showed no abnormalities. Pulse oximetry, which refers to her oxygen sats, is normal. And then we have an image of her right hand here, which appears to show some sort of erythematous or bilaceous discoloration. Questions asking, what should most likely be avoided in this patient? So Let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, acetazolamide, wrong fucking answer. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, highest yield use for Yosemite is that it prevents the reabsorption of bicarb in the proximal convoluted tubule, which will force a metabolic acidosis, which is a good thing in order to counteract altitude sickness. So you go to high altitude and acutely you're going to have uh, respiratory alkalosis. Kidney's not going to have time to uh, excrete bicarb, but the cetazolamide will force the excretion. So US simile wants you to know that you're going to have an up arrow for urine pH and up arrow for urine volume in the setting of acetazolamide. You can also use carbonic anhydrase inhibitors for glaucoma. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, aspirin, wrong answer. We could do a 46-minute discussion on every little detail about aspirin, uh, but I'll stay consolidated here for the point of this YouTube clip. But aspirin, obviously, COX inhibitor, you should avoid in patients who have GI bleeds, renal insufficiency. high yield uses for your would be ischemic heart disease, patients who have... Uh, angina. Okay, so obviously you give nitrates acutely for angina. You give a baby aspirin daily to those patients. You give antiplatelet therapy aspirin for patients who have carotid stenosis. Very fucking high yield for 2CK. I've talked about this in detail in other clips. Uh, it can be given to patients who have cerebrovascular disease. Can be given to patients who've had ischemic stroke after 4.5 hours. Holy shit! Because within it's TPA. Aspirin can be used if you have a low CHADS2 VAS score in atrial fibrillation. Okay, it can be used. Uh, myriad of things, as I just fucking said. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Should I see bromocryptine? Wrong answer. Dopamine 2 receptor agonist, which classically for US simile is used to treat prolactinoma. We obviously have other dopamine 2 receptor agonists, ropinirole, pramipexil, cabergoline, but bromocryptine, for whatever reason, is the one that tends to show up for prolactinoma. Okay? In this case, wrong fucking answer. Captopril, ACE inhibitor, wrong answer, uh, should be avoided in patients who have hereditary angioedema. Obviously, it can cause a dry cough. It can cause hyperkalemia. ACE inhibitors are first line uh, for heart failure. Okay, They improve ejection fraction. Even if you have a, a preserved ejection fraction heart failure, they still want ACE inhibitor ARB as first line. Also, first line for ACE numbers are first line for patients who have a hypertension in diabetes. Okay, it's a long fucking discussion for family medicine. Made prior clips on it. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice E and wrong answer. So. Nifedipine, uh, dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. This is used for hypertension in patients who do not have prediabetes, diabetes, any cardiovascular, supervascular disease, a lot of 2CK family medicine stuff there. Uh, Nifedipine, so if a patient doesn't have any of what I just said, really quickly, uh, a dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker or a thiazide can be used first line for hypertension. Otherwise, if you have any of those things, prediabetes, diabetes, heart failure, uh, cardiovascular disease, supervascular disease, you can use an ACE inhibitor and ARB first line, okay? So nifedipine can cause peripheral edema. That's the that's a high yield detail for your simile, okay? So peripheral edema, fluid retention, the diadropyridine calcium channel blockers. Wrong fucking answer. Phenylephrine, okay, this is the correct answer. It's an alpha-1 agonist, okay, not dramatic. I said this is past level. Now, I understand that many of you working on your farm, maybe your derm, you're not 100% sure what's going on here. You say, really, this is past level? I thought this was hard. Well, look, I mean, <clears throat> phenylephrine, alpha-1 agonist. Uh, so phenylephrine, oxymetazoline, mitodrine. Uh, alpha-1 agonism is going to constrict peripheral arterioles, okay, as well as uh, capillaries to an extent. So if you have Raynaud phenomenon, which is being shown in this patient here, which is constriction of the capillaries within uh, the fingers, okay, it can be idiopathic. It doesn't have to be part of Crest syndrome, okay? So Raynaud can just be benign familial in some people. And so uh, you're not, you're obviously not going to want to give uh, an agent that can constrict 
capillaries potentially if the patient's etiology is based on uh, capillary constriction, okay? And that's what's causing the discoloration where you have uh, capillary constriction, which causes a bluish discoloration, and then can even be white, and then you get reactive hyperemia, okay, appears red. So phenylephrine, oxymetazoline, mitodrine, alpha-1 agonists, uh, you would avoid these. This shows up on the NBME exam for step one, okay? You avoid these in patients who have Raynaud phenomenon, and just you should know those uh, drugs in general. Uh, High-yield uses for USMLE, the alpha-1 agonists, are going to be for the treatment of nasal congestion. So if you give these intranasally, by constrict by reducing blood flow in the nasal mucosa, you decrease inflammation and that can relieve the nasal congestion. Real quick, verapamil, wrong answer, but you need to know that this can cause constipation. Okay, okay, extremely high yield for TCK and family medicine in particular. As I just fucking said, nifedipine, the dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers can cause fluid retention, peripheral edema, but the non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, verapamil. Uh, Diltiazem, separate long fucking discussion, but verapamil. Uh, can cause constipation, okay? It's a very high yield side effect for US simile. In this case, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal until you make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.